Hello and welcome to another Raggy's uh, Beer Review. Just been putting your hand up to the phone to do that and it starts the video for you. Hey, modern technology, it's fantastic. Anyway, um, I've just looked at the beer wall and I've drank all the big ABVs. I'm on the sessionable stuff now. Oh dear. Um, but in any case, so we're going down to Hanlon's Brewery for their Yellow Hammer. Bought for Raggy's Beer Reviews by um, Happy Drinker Handy for Christmas. It was Christmas presents, as far as I remember. Yeah. Uh, described as a golden pale ale. I'll read what it says on the front. It says, uh, one of Devon, Devon, most popular craft ales, great for summer parties, barbecues and enjoying with friends. Uh, Hanlon's Yellow Hammer is light, golden ale, bursting, full of flavour, fruity and brilliantly refreshing. The addition of Cascade Ops gives a wonderful citrus character. Your local Devon Brewery. Multi-award winner, it says. I'm not sure for what, but uh, yeah, Hanlon'sBrewery.com. So, here we go. Let's dive in, see what it's like. First beer of the day, probably the only beer of the day at this rate. Um, I've got to sort out my uh, siphon a beer into a barrel. I'm supposed to be doing it tonight, but the first barrel that I picked up, there's black in the bottom. So, and, um, so I've just ran some bleach into the bottom, and uh, so I'm going to have to go to the next barrel and see how that is. This is the problem when you don't brew from one month to the next. You get to the barrel and all of a sudden, uh, if you haven't, if it's the barrel you haven't used, you know, there's issues. So, poured the whole bottle in, so it's not a bottle conditioned beer, it doesn't say it is anyway. Uh, golden pour, little near finger of white head on there, good bit of carbonation going on, lovely crystal clear pour, looks the job anyway. There's a nice. Nice tinge of fruitiness on the nose. And a nice tinge of fruitiness on the taste as well. Yes, jolly good show. Oh, just finished my second long day at work. After two stressful days at home waiting for the car to be fixed. Panicking as you do. Um... You know, just make sure there's no other costs. Because Gara will just say one thing. And then all of a sudden you get the dreaded bloody phone call. Where something else crops up. And you know, it's, it's always a worry. And uh, touch wood. Car seems to be okay. Yeah. Although I'm still driving along and listening to anything that sounds different. And uh, it's a really bad habit. And sometimes it's the road surfaces and the difference between dry roads and wet roads that you know, and you're listening for things, you know, as you're driving along and uh, avoiding potholes, Nottingham, pothole uh, capital of the country, it seems. We have got an awful lot of potholes on our roads, main roads as well, big, you know, not just some dirt little sidetrack like near my workplace ton of potholes there although the farmer farmer um will call he calls himself a farmer they've got a farm but they don't actually do any farming because they lease the land out and uh next time i say to them next time they say and say you call yourself a farmer don't you mate what do you farm no there used to be a pig farmer they did but now they've got the land but they don't do actually any any actual farming. Yeah. <laughs> About the only thing they do farm is uh, stupid tyres, logs, uh, and cones, and potholes. Yes, if they're um, good for that. I must have a, I must have a thing on that. I must have a look on the internet to see if there's a pothole farmer. Let's just get the whole thing out a second, you know. While it's in my head. Um, 
Let's do it. Pothole Farmer. There's the Pothole Gardener. Yeah, it's not, um, it's got things where people actually plant stuff in the potholes. A guy to fix him, pothole ridden farm tracks. There we go. Uh, farmer's weekly. <laughs> Do you know if I, if I was on? The chat with a chat with them, I'd be giving them that. Then again, it's probably a good thing I'm not because, um, I can have my buttons pushed very easily at times, and uh, you know, sometimes you'll say the wrong thing and things escalate, you know, like, like the uh, the stupidity in the world at the moment with countries, and uh, it seems like everyone wants a war, don't they? They're all baiting for it. They all seem to have it in their eyes, like they're, they're going for it. And um, last four years has been a strange world, I've got to say. I did really like the port stout from Hamlin's. Uh, if any beer that I would, you know, absolutely love to see in Nottingham, that is the one. Oh, it's wind. Sometimes you're down the shed and you hear something and you're like, the hell was that? Because obviously the shed's at the bottom of the garden. So it's like, I don't know, 30 yards from the house. So, you know... Not that, I've, not that I've counted, obviously. I'm only surmising it's 30 yards. It might even be 35. Um, no, I'd probably say 30 yards from the house. So, and, and I'm as far away from anybody's house as I can be. Our house, neighbour's house, neighbours there, and the neighbours at the back. I'm as literally as far away from every single house as you could be. Um... And to be fair, you can have the music blaring in here. And uh, you go outside up the garden, you can't hear it at all. So, uh, obviously, I've, obviously I've soundproofed it, uh, in a fashion at least. But, uh, yeah, anyway. A brilliantly bright beer, Hamlin's. As far as I know, they did relocate to Devon from somewhere near London. Um, from the stories that I've, I've heard in the past, anyway. Does say on the other side, and we read it. We are passionate about providing excellent real craft ale. We use the finest hops, traditional floor malted barley, and natural spring water from our rolling Devon Hills, which makes Yellow Hammer a multi award winning beer ale and Hanlon's flagship beer. Brewed at Hanlon's at Ill Farm, Half Moon Village, Devon. EX5 5AE five England. Although the Devon bit would give that game away, you know, to most people. But uh, there we go. So, oh. I've just come off the back of doing two long ones and. Um, I've got another long one to do tomorrow. Although five hours at work, two hours on one garden, and then going over to my mother-in-law's and doing her neighbour's gardens. And that's... <sighs> Luckily, it's only a once or twice a year thing. And, oh, they've got a party this weekend. They like the cold, because it's going to be freezing this weekend. Um... 
If any luck, they'll cancel. That'd be nice. April, a bit early for a party in your garden. But uh, I assume the grass is ridiculously high. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be strimming and blowing. And I did take the mower over once, but oh my God. Uh, I took the work, the work mower and it took hours going over and over and over and over. And then the last time I went, I actually used the strimmer, the work strimmer. We've got a fantastic strimmer. Absolutely the diamond it is. And uh, it rips through gardens, something unbelievable. And then what you do, you strim it down, even long grass. Strim it down, blow. Strim again, and you can get it to go down to a, to a level which is... Uh, it's not bowling green conditions, let's put it that way. But it's decent enough for, you know, some, some garden party. Especially for people who don't cut the grass, who cut the grass twice a year, twice a year, you know, um, you can never make anything special out of something that's, you know, not a decent lawn. Um, my lawns at work are mowed weekly, and, and that's near enough through the year, even through the winter months, they're mowed every like every two or three weeks. Uh, in essence, rolling the grass. But, um, especially in the middle of winter, but we're picking leaves up as well, you know, we're picking leaves up till January because leaves blow onto the grass from the woodland and uh, yeah, that's an absolute pain in the backside. It's not something, it's something you just can't stop happening. I've tried, I've tried to grow plants and uh, this year, I think last year, what I did last year, I strimmed after the bluebells had finished, I strimmed it all down for it to come again. This year, I'm actually leaving it, the woodland, as long as the pathways are, are there, I'm leaving the woodland to grow. And I'm hoping that there's that much vegetation that when the leaves drop in, the, in December, when I do strim it, it just covers the vegetation. Uh, my hopes and aspirations, anyway, probably won't happen like that, but uh, yeah, yeah, I've got a good strimmer for the job. Well, hopefully, anyway. Um, the bloke, the bloke at work dropped the strimmer on the floor and broke the air filter cage. So there's no air filter now. So it's a bit louder uh, than it should be. So how long it lasts for? Well, there's another thing. You know, in the in the end end, end game, uh, they won't last that long without an air filter. Um, So, oh, enjoying this beer. Uh, first beer of the day, like I say. Um, I do intend to have another one. It's that same fly again. Don't know what it is. If I didn't get it that time, I'd be absolutely surprised. Horrible oh, little thing. Anyway, it was, hopefully. Um, but, uh, I forgot where I was going there. Yeah. So, just the one beer tonight and go up the house and, uh, hopefully get the, my, one of my homebrew kits drained into a, a barrel and, uh, maybe leave it in the barrel overnight, uh, and then bottle it up tomorrow. So it's too late now tonight to start bottling blooming beers because I've got to rinse the bottles, sterilise the bottles, rinse the bottles again, and then fill up the bottles. So, yeah, that's a process. So I'll probably do it all tomorrow night. But at least if I uh, do some of it tonight, then again, in essence, as long as if I can, if I can just get a barrel clean and sterilised, ready for tomorrow. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. A few hours, a, a day extra with the hops in, not a massive issue. Might make it a bit more flavourful, I assume, I don't know. Um, 
although these are quite potent tops, so hopefully, hopefully. Anyway, on with the beer. I ain't seen that flung again, so maybe I did swat it this time. There's only so many times I want something flying around my head uh, when I'm trying to have a nice chill beer in the shed. I've demoted the bar stool. Bar stool's here now. Demoted. Uh, can't have a bar stool that keeps going down on me when I'm trying to do a beer review. I started off up here the other day. By the time we got to the end of the beer review, I'm, I'm near, I'm, I'm near the same height as the raggy sign. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I look like a little lad with a big, with a big wall behind me. I mean, I probably am a little lad with a big wall behind me, but uh, yeah, I don't need, I don't need the seat to do it for me. Um, I mean, there's times where that will come in under, you know, you sit down next to me, just chilling all the way down, and, you know, it could come, it could be really, really good. Oh, but not when I'm tired and, uh, you know, I just want to have a drink, chill, have a nice beer. So the flagship, flagship of the Hanlon's Brewery. So, yeah, Yellow Hammer. Uh, I mean, for me, it's a lovely fruity beer. It, uh, Delivers a pleasurable drinking experience. Uh, what was the ABV things? I've already forgot. 4.2%. Oh, just goes down so well. Um, there's a nice bit of citrus going on for me. But like I say, just chilling me out nicely. Well, as long as that fly don't keep coming back, I'll, I'll, I'll be all good. <laughs> oh, ready for the weekend again? These weekends, they seem to be coming at a rate of knots. I mean, a minute ago it was like October. And... Uh, then it was March and we were at Cleethorpes and uh, now we're at the end of April. End of April already. What the hell was going on? Hey. I mean, the war in Ukraine, what are we in now? Year two and two and a half years now? These countries in the world, they're just stupid, isn't it? I don't see the need for any wars, really. But the only problem is, you, you let so different societies into your country and they start something. And, uh, yeah, you know, some people, that life is their, is what they're used to. It's what makes them thrive. But they get out of that, they come to the UK and, uh, yeah, it does beg the question, you know, what what's going to happen in years to come you only need to see it uh, is news items around the country where you see some stuff and it's like bloody hell you know then again i suppose in life in life there's always going to be that element the nutty element or, or the people that just do stupid things um and sometimes it's who you hang around with and uh, keeping away from that element of society you know because they will always do what they do and uh, not being a part of that society whatever society that may be and all because there's lots of elements of the population you think to yourself I'm glad I, I'm glad I have nothing to do with that the inner city. I mean, I was born in the inner city. But I'll tell you now, I wouldn't want to live anywhere near the inner city now. There are some very rough areas and uh, places where you think, oh, dear. you know, you see gangs and that, and uh, it's uh, it's frightening for the for the young generation. I mean, we try and put a uh, a blanket around our children and the grandchildren. Um, and 
you know, you can be streetwise, but you can also be very street clever and just avoid that situation. And, uh, you know, but not every idiot you can spot from a mile off, you know, or you know what their, or you can spot their intentions. Uh, recent events in Nottingham last year, I mean, you know, Someone like the bloke who murdered those three people in Nottingham. If he'd have started swinging uh, whatever he had in his hand in the middle where there was workmen with tools, uh, it could have been a very different proposition. You start swinging a knife where someone's got a spade or a hatchet in their hand, you know, as brave as you think you are. Um, you know, it can it can end differently. Although then, you know, what would happen then? Would you be accused of? <laughs> it's where the law is ever so strange. It really is. It's like you, the law protects the criminals over the uh, over the victims. Um, and it does seem to be the case just recently. It really does. Sad times. Anyway, I've had a good chat. I've had a good beer. 21 minute review. Sometimes I'll do a review, seven minutes. It's all about the beer and that's it. And then other times you do a bit of chatting, but you're enjoying the beer as you're chatting. It's the way it should be. Um, want to drink this again? I'd love to have it on cask somewhere. Will it come to Nottingham? I doubt it. I've never seen Hanlon's in Nottingham. Uh, so, you know, you never know uh, if they spread this far. There are a few pubs in the Nottinghamshire area. Um, Rouse Emporium in Long Eaton. They do seem to have beers from Devon and that part of the world. So, you never know. Um... But in any case, would I have it again? Yes. Out of five for me, a good 4.1 out of five. And uh, that's my review. Thank you for watching. And uh, I need to go and uh, do some cleaning. Cheers.